imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Total Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. Protonic Reversal. With your host, Conan Neutron. Broadcasting from a secret underground lair in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. A gigantic middle finger to everything that is rock. About music, rock and roll, and corporate power. The thing is, though... If you don't laugh, you're going to go on a killing spree with sharp and nails. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Confidence of a hero or a fool, I wasn't exactly certain which. Could not be more professional. It's the real world I choose to go my life to. That's okay. It means something. It means something. And they got away. Yeah. You know, that's my take on it. Like, what's yours? Protonic River. That's like a science thing, right? Indeed, indeed, indeed. It is a science thing. It is a science place. It's a scientific fact. We are all up in your face. It is time for the one, the only, Protonic Reversal. Welcome to it. Wow, cool. Uh, Helios Creed tonight. Helios freaking Creed of a little band called uh, Chrome. Perhaps you've heard of them. Really psyched on this. This is, uh, I've been trying to make this happen for so, so, so long. And uh, this is episode 213, Proton Conversal, ProtonConversal.com, of course. Patreon.com slash ProtonConversal for the archives. Dollar a month will get you all the episodes ahead of time. Uh, no ads, no sponsors, no kidding. But yeah, I've been trying to get Helios in the show since before he went to the hospital this last time. And uh, let's put it this way bit of a hard guy to get a hold of but it's finally happening and i'm so excited so excited to talk to him and it's going to be a great time uh i haven't really used these intros much lately to thank everyone just for for listening and for spreading the show around (laughs) like a pandemic (laughs) you know i as stupid as they are itunes reviews help it helps people find the show Spotify has a lot of share features, things along those lines. However you listen, there's no wrong way to listen. But people have been sharing that around, and uh, you know that, that's nice. That that makes me feel good. Makes me feel like it makes me feel like this is a worthwhile thing. So I just wanted to kind of give a very earnest, very earnest thank you to everyone for doing that. And holy crap, I'm talking to Helios Creed, right? <laughs> so yeah, uh, welcome to new listeners. This show's called Kona New Transport Controversial. Thank you to all of my loyal listeners. Let's get to it. Helios Creed. Hey, Conan. How you doing? Hey, good. Here we are. That's yeah. uh, <laughs> That was a little confusing there. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. This phone kind of works a little strange. How you doing? Good. How are you doing, man? This is uh, I'm doing better. Doing I, good. I, 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 got, I think I'm getting a little laryngitis, but uh, I feel pretty good. That's good. Yeah, I know you had some uh there was there were some health concerns somewhat recently, so I was wanting Oh to... yeah, I had a couple of burst arteries. You know, but they fixed it. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's what we want. Yeah. We we, we want you yeah, healthy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm I, I'm really healthy now. Uh, there's actually nothing wrong with me. That's great. That's wonderful. Except for my back, I have a broken back. That's about it. Nothing, you know, no organ failures or anything like that. No cancer. Yeah, yeah. That's that's no uh, anything, you know, like other than the uh, clumsiness of me. <laughs> How did you end up breaking your back? Oh, I was cl- I had an RV and I I was going up the back ladder to see what's on the roof, you know, see how to put shit on the and I fell from the very top Ooh. onto the trailer hitch ah. on my Ooh. back. Surprised I lived through it. God <laughs> dang. You know? That's awful. Really? That's awful. Yeah. yeah, it hurts just thinking yeah, I'm getting I'm getting sympathy <laughs> pain hearing you talk about it. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, man. I I, I don't even I I don't even like telling people what happened. It hurts just to tell them. But uh, yeah, you know, that's uh, that's the way it is. <laughs> well, I'm I'm 
so glad to, that we're we're finally getting a chance to talk a bit. Wanting to have you on the show for a while. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's been a bit. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. So, uh, you know, I, I've I've kind of want to start from the beginning. I know that's it's kind of ancient history, but I think alien soundtracks and half machine lip moves are sort of timeless, weird, uh, out of time records. Like they're they're. Uh, they sound both of its time and like of no time at all. And it's a, that was a while ago, but I mean, do you have uh, any interesting memories from uh, making those records with Damon? Like way back when? Oh like, yeah. We had a very, you know, oh, like-minded relationship with music. Uh, it was very cool. And what I liked about, music rubbed off on him and what he liked about music rubbed off on me. So we sort of, you know, fill up each other's void of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Fill in the, fill in and, the uh, blank spots almost. Yeah. yeah. And you know, we sang all these songs and sort of like that band. Uh, what is it? That band um, Genesis. Oh, sure. How Phil Collins and uh, what's his name sort of sound alike. I, you know, they sing uh, Phil Collins and um, uh, Peter Gabriel. You yeah, Peter Gabriel. Yeah. You know, they sing similar, different subject matter, but you know what I mean. Right, they they develop a... that style. <laughs> right, well, me and Damon style. sort of did something like that with the way we sing, sang together, and. You know, his vocals rubbed off on me, mine rubbed off on him. And, you know, we really dug how each other sang. I didn't like his the way he sang at first. I didn't think he could sing at all. <laughs> but, you know, later on, man, I, you know, really, I'd, I'd start asking him to sing the songs. As I thought his vocals were more appropriate for a lot of songs than mine, you know? Right, because it... Because I was... You know, I was the only guy singing for a while. So for like, yeah, yeah, because I mean, it's it, that stuff doesn't come out of nowhere. And so were you, yeah, were right. you listening yeah. to? Because for me, it kind of, my initial reaction, like years and years back when I first heard those records, was that it was almost like, oh, it's like if Jimi Hendrix had like been beamed back around to Neptune and sort of like it got warped in transmissions. Like the whole mm -hmm. record has like that vibe that it definitely is coming from. Kind of a rock well, place, I'm but super huge Hendrix fan, right. so that might help. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like all the weird jump cuts and the um, you know the the sampling, which must have been mm -hmm. incredibly yeah. difficult at the time, right? I mean, what, oh, how did yeah, that come yeah. to pass? How did you? You mean back in the day? Yeah, I mean we didn't have the, the modern Damon time. was a genius with stuff like that. A lot of most of it was splicing, integral splicing that he would do with tape. It was before. Uh, you know, um, before all that kind of, uh, you know, digital sampling, sampling and yeah. shit, there was no sampling back then. It was all splicing. <laughs> so, I mean, was there ever, was, was there a mindset behind it? That, uh, that again? Oh, as I say, was there, was there a mindset towards, Hey, we're going to, you know, have this be part of the music or was it just like, Hey, let's throw it against the wall and see what sticks. Like how much of it was, was preconceived and how much of it was just happy accidents. Well, and, uh... we originally started out being a punk band and we had this whole straight punk set because punk rock was what was happening. But I said to Damon, we sort of said it at the same time to each other. We're not, you know, we make pretty, we're a pretty good punk band. We we always have a punk songs on our record and stuff, and we're we're punk rockers, you know, deep inside. But I'm also, and he's also in love with psychedelia. So we just did what we both love. I go, let's just be honest with ourselves, you know, psychedelia was the last thing that was pop popular. <laughs> if done by a hippie but because it wasn't done by a hippie and it was done by us who was punk it worked you know because it wasn't peace love and flowers stuff it was 
peace lover else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it hit with more punk rock energy in it, as opposed yeah, to like Emerson, yeah. Lake and Palmer or whatever it was. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> Scary <laughs> Garcia, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I mean, and the whole thing just by nature of how it all came together has very much almost like a sci-fi presentation. Uh, yeah, did, 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 that was oh. Damon's genius, yeah. Yeah, and so it kind of like set the vibes early on. I mean, like you yeah, know, yeah, like alien soundtracks, right? That, that's, yeah, exactly. It's in the name, <laughs> and it fit right in. You know, it's exactly what I wanted to do. I couldn't pick a better group of people. You know, if, if I tried, if I searched for them, and you know, I just it just came to me you know, through my bit through my. Uh, my uh, violin player, who is at the time Gary Spain, okay. and I was playing, uh, you know, acoustic guitar. Yeah, and that worked out, you know. So was there was there ever any kind of north star to what you wanted this music to to be like, or was it just? Creation? No, it's not what I wanted to do at all. Yeah, <laughs> I was all brainwashed by some psychedelic hippie shit and. Then I started getting into punk rock when yeah. I met Damon. We started getting it in it together. I go, this is so much ballsier than fucking shit, you know. Let's make music that's fucking madness, you know. <laughs> yeah, because that first, cause, you know what I mean. Because the visitation, it's almost like that's almost like uh, Santana plus Eno or something, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Had a way different like vibe to it. And then like suddenly with Alien soundtracks, it was sort of like, oh, found your brand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it just clicked, you know, and... and uh, what, what stuff were you mm, listening? Were you listening to like uh, Stooges? Uh, or what, what, what punk bands were you hyped At about? the time, yeah, yeah. Stooges, you know... Um, were big and Sex Pistols, of course, sure, and yeah. and uh, the Clash were really cool at that time. Uh, they were pre, they were not signed yet, you know. And then there was uh, just a lot of cool bands back then. I was really lucky to be, you know, in a time where just music was so great and accessible, you know, and. Uh, the social scene was great, and uh, I was very fortunate to grow up in that time, I think. So you mentioned Hendrix, which, I mean, I think... Yeah, he, Hendrix, he, yeah. I saw him three months before he died. Oh, wow, that's wild. Yeah, I was on two hits of Orange Sunshine. <laughs> 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 yeah, best show i ever seen in my life. Yeah, I mean, that's, you know, that's got to be I mean, astounding. I bet the stuff helped, but, you know, still, <laughs> man, you know... Everybody was walking out with their mouths hanging open, literally couldn't even talk, you know. Yeah, I mean, such a singular <laughs> talent. In... Yeah, just, and he comes out, he's, he goes up to the mic, he goes, hello, it's going to be loud. <laughs> if you don't like it loud, you better leave. <laughs> Good advice. <laughs> and then he starts, he starts with, uh, you know, a Voodoo Child, oh, you know. Man. So cool. So, I mean, I, I thought I was going to pass out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's oh, not... my God, my favorite song right away. Yeah, it's out of the game. You know, <laughs> she just fucking floored everybody. Yeah, and I saw straight Japanese people jumping over the railing, falling 20, 30 feet to get down to them. You know, conservative people that you wouldn't see do anything like that at any other concert, you know? <laughs> The music yeah, just it was had amazing. That, that strong of an effect on people, huh? Yeah, that's that. It, and, and then you know, we went back to our high school the next day, and we were all talking about it. And yeah, people were saying really interesting things because we were all just kids, you know, on acid. And yeah, it was like his guitar was controlling you. <laughs> I mean, you know, it was like right, you yeah, know, yeah. they're just saying really all this shit that only kids say and. You know, I still remember it. I remember it to this day. And the other greatest show I've been to, second greatest, was Black Sabbath. Oh, I man. thought that was totally fantastic. Was man, that, I was that around two, the same time? Yeah, around the same time. And I, 
I did another two hits. <laughs> <laughs> why why, why mess with sunshine. the formula? <laughs> yeah, yeah, why mess with the formula? Oh, yeah, but I I did a little bit too much at Black Sabbath because I already did my two hits of Orange Sunshine. And I just happened to sit, it, psychedelics were really huge back then. I just sat, happened to sit right next to this guy that had a bag of uh, synthetic powdered mescaline. Oh, my God. A whole bag. And, and he was passing it around. Everybody just help yourself. You know, and was it and I was just, <laughs> yeah, and I was just grabbing handfuls of it and sticking it in my mouth. You know, the next thing I know, I'm walking around looking for John because I'm freaking out. And I sit down next to this guy. You know, here's a guy. Maybe I could talk to him. I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. So I sit down next to this guy, and I go, hey, man, uh, how you doing, man? I'm kind of freaking out. He goes, me too. And then his girlfriend comes, grabs him by the arm, and takes him away. I go, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, what am I going to do? Yeah. And then I'm walking around in circles around this great big uh, concert hall, you know, just not knowing, you know, like I wanted to see the show but i'm so fucking spaced i don't even know where i'm going you know and there was time i left my body when i was walking around and i was looking down at me walking i go no 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 this ain't gonna be no no this is nah i can't have this you know so i got back in my body and then i found john fackrell and oh sweat pig was still playing Great man, the drummer, Sweat Pig, uh, uh, from Lee Michaels, mm -hmm. his drummer. Uh, he was uh, fuck. What was he called? Well, he made a band called Sweat Pig. He was about three hundred pounds, you know, this drummer. But he, God, he was great. And then Black Sabbath came on. I was floored with their show too. <laughs> was that around? Would that have been around Sabotage? was like that record do you remember exactly when it was like what era oh i don't they yeah they uh yeah it was in the early days they were they were doing uh you know um all their all their biggest hit songs that seemed to come out around that time paranoia paranoid and yeah yeah you know so that had to be yeah. pretty, pretty freaking cool as well i mean that was probably a yeah. good show I would oh God, yeah, man! And I like the controversy about it, you know, because everybody's supposed to be into peace and love, and here's this band, you know, that you know pretends to be dark wizards, and people were all going, "Oh man, they're evil!" No oh, man, they're great, you know. It's just really funny, you know, all these hippies trying to you know, put it into perspective, you know, and I go, man, who cares what it is, man? It's smoking, you know? Yeah, exactly, yeah. It doesn't, <laughs> you know it doesn't what I mean? Who cares? <laughs> and, and actually, Black Sabbath had no religious beliefs. They were just, it was just a show, you know? Well, the but, imagery was cool. It just yeah, cool the imagery stage. was quite effective, <laughs> right. you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. especially to an eighteen-year-old on acid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but those two shows were really super big influence on Chrome. If really, if I really wanted to say what influenced Chrome, I would always go back to those That's, two yeah. shows and because i was just saying oh, i gotta do something like this with my life i gotta do something like this this is the only way to live i gotta do that you know yeah. and as you know and best i can i mean yeah but you know there's this other side of me saying you but yeah you know as well as i do it's a pipe dream hardly anybody ever makes it yeah. to a point where they're living out their you know, their dream. So, you know, and everybody was telling me that my mom, my friends and shit, you know, and that just made me want to try harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Cause yeah. you're, you're just, you're lucky if you can just keep it sustainable, you know? I mean, yeah. It's, it's so like, that's the move. I pulled off the impossible. I made a record every, um, almost every year from 22 to 66. Yeah, so it's I was You know I, what I mean? I, I was Nobody looking, does that. I was looking you know? at the discography, like both the Chrome discography oh, and your solo discography. Pretty huge. And it's it's um it, yeah, it's been a consistent work. Yeah, pretty you know? consistent, you know, 
compared to, you know, well, I've always felt it was my calling, you know, and my second love is, is carpentry, but you know, I wasn't, I wasn't very much demand for that. <laughs> you well, know? But it's also like you've got, you've got a, a gift and you've got a viewpoint to express. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, you got to have these experiences of seeing, you know, these incredible, amazing, iconic bands, you know, touch you in this way. It's, kind of cool to be able to give that back too i mean it's yeah cool. yeah i i'm very happy with the life that i was given you know as far as you know i couldn't have had a better life you know there's a rumor about alien soundtracks i don't know if this is just part of the legend or if it's true but didn't it uh begin as a soundtrack for a strip show or something along those yeah lines? actually that's what that's what it, it I was told by Damon, and yeah, it was, it was supposed to be a uh, for a strip show, but you know, the, for the Mitchell brothers. Oh, um, but yeah, they yeah. they okay. said <laughs> they said it was too weird and undanceable. You know, <laughs> uh, anybody could see that. You know, it's not made for. You know, Damon didn't know anything about rock or dance music when I met him. That what you heard is all he really knew, and me knowing quite a bit about rock and drum beats and dance beats, I, you know, I, I brought a lot of that to him, and he, he had a lot of them himself just in the closet, and when we started doing that, man, because Damon was a drummer, he was best drummer I ever played with, you know, Damon. I don't know if you knew that. I didn't even know he played drums, but it's also... Yeah, he played drums on Alien Soundtrack, oh, okay. Half Machine Lip Moves, and Red Exposure. Those are all very interesting drum parts, too. Yeah, right? they're, they're, yeah. They're not just, like, drummers <laughs> drummers uh, compliment him a lot, saying, wow, you know, the thing I like about Damon is to where he throws his rolls. Like, no drummers yeah. would ever think of throwing a roll at that spot, but he did it and it worked, you know? And I go, well, I never, you know, I never thought about that because I'm not really, I mean, uh, a uh, professional drummer. Right, 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 right. But, uh, yeah, these guys would point out what a great drummer Damon was and how amazed they were at his playing. And I go, oh, really? Wow. You know, I, I'm i impressed. Well, you I, know, I, I start I, getting... It works good for that uh, for that time period of Chrome too, because so much of it almost yeah. sounded like cut up technique. Anyway, like Burroughs. Yeah, we style. weren't into a bunch of rolls, and we weren't into stopping and starting. Yeah. We were into consistency, uh, hypnoticness. Still am really, right? You know, sort of a hypnoticness um, about it. You know. So, All my favorite bands are like, you know, Pink Floyd, uh, the Rolling Stones, uh, you know, bands that just had a consistent drum beat. And that, I really found that really great when you're tripping, you know, like that kind <laughs> sure, of yeah, yeah. consistency, you know, versus stopping and starting and changing, which is also good. But here I am trying to, you know, make a vehicle for you to ride you know, and you know, you know how you, you do that with your mind, you know, and like for me, that's how I learned to do it because, uh, there seems to be a whole like physical reality to that kind of, uh, sound, yeah. you know, like in another area, you know? Well, and that's sort of like the true, actual psych music you know i think it, 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 yeah. gets, it gets used as a shorthand for meaning like you know certain types of sonic notes and things along those lines but actual psychedelic music i mean that could be something like you know tangerine dream or something you yeah know, i like them it's it's not necessarily you know oh they've got the echo going and like you know they're doing yeah. crazy solo it's, it's more just like does it transport you somewhere else and that's it's something that i feel like you know that that's been a consistent through line that it is like kind of like a you know, strap yeah. into the roller coaster and away you go. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it, me, me and Damon were both, in, you know, like, the fact that music could be 3D, not just a flat 
picture screen, you know, like, and that's what Chrome is trying to show people, like, hey, this is 3D music, and Damon said it first, and I go, I hear you, Damon, that's exactly what this is, and that's what we're trying to accomplish, and I think that's what psychedelic music is, three-dimensional, four-dimensional, more dimensional, right. rather than just a flat song with yeah, a verse, yeah, chorus, yeah. verse, chorus, it's done, you know, <laughs> And we were trying to, we really dug the whole idea, like Pink Floyd with Echoes or something, you know, like a whole experience, even, uh, um, um, you know, Iron Butterfly within a kind of view. Oh, sure. Yeah, of course. You know, yeah, yeah. you know, that was epic at the time. And when I listen to it today, it still sounds epic to me because that was when I was a youth, you know, and. You know, the musicians didn't have to prove anything back then. They were all fucking filthy rich, you know, right. uh, having a ball, do, playing whatever kind of music they wanted to play. Yeah, and that's something where, I mean, did, did you, at the time, when you're, you know, they talk about that era, that Alien Soundtracks, Taff Machine, Lip Moves era, did you did you think about the fact that that was going to stick? I mean, I'm trying to, I'm thinking of um, I guess it was Half Machine Lip Moves. No, man, I got when, when we were done with the record, Alien Soundtracks. I go, God, this record sounds like shit. Nobody's going <laughs> to like it. it. The quality sucks. I mean, you know, everybody's getting into the slick music. You know, How is this going to work out? And it worked than all the slick bands, you know. Yeah. It just hit a nerve. And, you know, and with it's people. it's funny that what does and doesn't stick with folks because you can't you can kind of make yourself crazy trying to predict it. But then I mean I'm thinking also no you can't make it happen. You can't predict anything like that. Yeah, you know, and and then it starts sounding like hotcakes. You know, and I wow maybe there's something these people are saying that I'm not seeing. So then I took some acid and listened to it and. <laughs> Ah, yeah, yeah, it's making sense now, you know. I had to get out of my head, you know. Right, right, because some of you too close to it. Sure, it makes sense. They're selling really good, and, you know, Alien Soundtrack, so we were all hot to do Half Machine Lip Moves then. That's why that record came out so good. It was just, we were making it. We had inspiration. We were young. We didn't do a lot of drugs just yet, you know. yeah. I mean, you know. and, and that one's got like, you know, that's got TV as eyes. You've been duplicated. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, I info. did psychedelics and pot pretty much. And Damon didn't do anything. He had some old leafy pot that sat in this box for years. He wouldn't even smoke that. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, and th that kind of, to me, that sort of uh, brought, you know, the crazy space feedback guitar kind of more yeah, the forefront yeah. on that one. Was that, was yeah. that just a natural outgrowth? It's just the way I play. Yeah, yeah. You know? Um, you know, like, Hendrix is my hero, but I did my best not to sound like him. Right. You know, to have my right. own sound. Like, you know, like Stevie Ray Vaughan, yeah, he sounds really good like Hendrix, but... We already had Hendrix, you know. I want you don't want you don't want a Hendrix other, rip off. Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, like I just like you know my own sound. I searched for my own sound, you know, and and uh, punk rock was perfect because you could do whatever you wanted with guitar in that scene. And well, I already had talent from being, you know, from just. I was already a, uh, what do you call it? A uh, technical, just had it down right, right. So above you, all my friends and anybody I knew, you know, Were you um, at the time. Were you, were other bands around mm -hmm. at the time? Like, did you vibe with them at all? I'm thinking of like, uh, I mean, was Flipper around at that point? Or, uh, no, I, I that was before way them. before them. Well, I mean, I'm talking about for Half Machine Lift moves, though. When, when that, oh, that was yeah, them. they were around for that. Yeah, they, I think, yeah, yeah. Ed was a, a Chrome fan. He admitted it in a, you know, like, he likes my guitar playing, you know. Yeah. And I love his guitar playing, man, I gotta say. I was really happy 
when Flipper started emerging, you know, like, wow, this is great, you know, you know, <laughs> Yeah, did you for me. Feel, did you feel like there was like common cause there? Like just I mean, not yeah. the fact that you guys sounded like each other, but that like just both being kind of idiosyncratic yeah. weirdos <laughs> doing your thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it felt like a movement. It felt cool. It felt you know, we had a better scene than England, by far better punk scene. California. Right. We were really the punk capital of the world. You know? Yeah, Even the English true. people admit it. It's interesting that, yeah, it's interesting how that works as far as like documentation of what does and doesn't yeah. get uh, yeah. into the story. But it's, it's, I'm always interested yeah. in hearing about that era. Uh, for yeah. that reason, exactly. Like, it seemed like there's a lot of amazing stuff happening. Yeah, I'm still getting, you know, I'm getting a lot of people lately that want to know what happened, how it happened back then. And, you know, a lot of, you know, interviews and I tell people what I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So did you, yeah. uh, with, and the Dick Kennedys were kind of getting, getting it together. Yeah, they like were that. getting big and yeah, me and Jello were friends. He was a kid and I was basically a kid and, you know, he was all, he, his single came out California Ubralis or something, yeah. you know, <laughs> and, uh, he was all excited and alien soundtracks just came out. We were like, you know, just young kids, kind of, you know. Does it ever trip you out at all that, you know, those especially Half Machine Lit moves, like it's kind of considered a uh, influential post-punk record, kind of beginning of industrial yeah, noise cool, rock? Man. Like, I there's mean, all I these think... lists, you know, that of these different genres that all kind of listen to that record and took what they took out of it. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, I, yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a way to go is, uh, you know, if you want to, like, whatever kind of guitar player you want to be, it's all there. Yeah. Serious guitar playing, fucked up guitar playing, you name it, <laughs> you know? And I, I didn't realize that until I looked back at it older and stuff, you know? And right, it's just right. like what you said, you know, like, it's all there. You know, so, you know, because I, I did so much... I was a virtuoso in regular, I mean, you know, regular guitar that what Damon was teaching me and was even better, you know, because he was into tones and I always wanted to get into tones, <laughs> you know, because he's from a rich family. So he was, we were able to buy just about any effect we could think of at the time. What was around? You know, I mean, what, I couldn't, but he... Right, <laughs> the band code yeah. by extension of yeah. somebody being able to afford it. Yeah, there were, yeah. Because there was like mode I, on that. You know, I found... There was, uh, you know, obviously all the tape manipulation and things along those lines. But I mean, yeah, all that stuff, you know, is like <laughs> it was great. It was a great time because nobody could do any of the stuff he was doing, you know, because he came from L.A. art school. Yeah, and was doing it before, you know, you know they were. It was it was great, man. Because I I just had a pure rock background, you know, just rock rock bands, high school rock bands, party rock bands, you know. And he had this art background. Yeah, and that, you know? that was a and good melody. I, I always liked making weird sounds with my guitar, and I always went for the weirdest. And it just fit, you know, our what we wanted to do. You know, we brought the best out of each other for years. Yeah, and, until and, you know he got into heroin, and well, yeah. it sort of all came to an end there quickly. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, and and I do want to talk about that, but I just I I'm such a big fan of that record. I mean, I it's it, like TV as eyes is such a yeah, you know, such a killer opening track. Like it's kind of yeah. like an opening statement, you know. And then you've got things where yeah, you know, that that song was was in the trash. When we really? didn't know what to start the record with, yeah, we threw it away, and uh, we were going, you know, like maybe we threw away a song. We might want to check them out, you know. And we had TV as eyes, and I go, I don't know, man. I don't really, you know. I didn't. And Damien goes, that's great. Let's put this on in front of it, and I still didn't like. It. And 
<laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's like the most popular song ever made in my fucking yeah. life. <laughs> you know? <laughs> All these years later, we're talking I don't about know, it. Dude, I still don't like it that much, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, yeah. man. Didn't Gary, yeah, Gary like, Spain play bass on that, right? That was like one of the songs. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's just really crazy, man. It's something that I didn't like that much. Didn't even <laughs> want to pull it out of the trash. And here it is, my my most popular song I ever wrote. <laughs> did, what what songs you know? on that record, like what did you think was going to be like, oh, this is the song. This is, this is like... I like the song... Uh, I liked uh, um, Co- oh, uh, March of the Chrome Police. Yeah, yeah, that one's great. You know, that's one of my favorite. You know, me and Damon wrote that song. You know, actually, Damon wrote it in his head, and he was playing playing guitar, but I knew exactly what he wanted. He knew I knew exactly what he wanted, you know? Yeah. And it worked out. I still play that song. I like it. I still love it today. Yeah, so what so when you're digging stuff up to play live, like what's the mindset because there's so much material. There's so many records. Do you, do you kind of like want to balance Yeah, it we have to sit down and oh, you know, like I let the band pick out their favorite songs. Each guy gets to pick out a couple songs and I really don't know. I like the songs they pick out and you know, as well as the ones I might, you know, I do definitely have about four songs I like to play. Right. You know, but yeah, it, it's democratic. <laughs> it's, it's it's let everybody Except have, have a say. little more power yeah. than they do. You know, <laughs> well, yeah, I would imagine so. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, they're cool with it. <clears throat> you know, they miss playing. Man. I go. I knew that was going to happen <clears throat> when this COVID hit. You know, yeah, fucking Jones into play. Well, I'm working on that too, like a mini tour from from Seattle to San Diego. You know, I mean, it's 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 just you want to be safe. You know, it's like hard yeah, to... I mean, we're going to be safe. <laughs> you know, we're going to have the social distancing. Math. Hey, if they're going to do football and shit, why can't we do shit, man? <laughs> well, everyone seems no, to be doing this online shit. I'm not going to push it, but now. if it works out. Yeah. And if my, you know, if we don't have a lot of trouble booking shows, and if there's places to book, we'll do it. Yeah, and I think that's good. You know, I don't. I'm. If you're going to get this virus, you're going to get this virus, man. <laughs> you know, you can't stop life. Yeah, and, and it's it's definitely it's destroying been... economy, destroying the world's economy. It's it's. I mean, what are we going to choose, man? You know, it's like, I could see the problem. Yeah, we could all stay safe and be at home and not take any chances, but we're going to lose everything that way too, huh? It's tough. I mean, it seems like a lot of bands yeah. are doing the, like, playing stuff, playing a show on the internet. Like, you put on the internet and people, like, look I at it. I couldn't do that. That's not for me. I got plenty <laughs> of live shows already on the internet. They're all free. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not the I don't, same. I don't too. Fucking, it's not the same. I'm not going to charge people to watch a stupid show on the fucking internet. That doesn't seem right to me, man. Oh, you could get you could watch this live, and then that's worth it. But anything on the internet, come on, it can't be that good, you know? <laughs> <laughs> come on, guy. What are they What are they charging for that? I mean, so for it. It depends. Like some people are just are doing like, oh, it's like eight dollar ticket, and some people are just doing yeah. it for free. You eight, know, it depends. It's like okay. eight dollars for a ticket to see a band on YouTube. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> it's not. Forget for me. it. It's, I don't not want... for me either, man. I'll, I'll just go watch a rehearsal somewhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's yeah, that see that separates the men from the boys right there. Can you see it? Can you see it? <laughs> Why we're still around and so many bands aren't? Yeah. Why Hawkwind's around and so many bands aren't? You know. Well, that's that's a good that's a good point. Like, do you feel like yeah. what what gives you the Dave longevity Box, to keep doing definitely it? in his seventies or maybe even eighty? Yeah. You know, I really don't know his age, but, you know, he's no spring chicken. (laughs) 
So what do you think the key is towards, you know, maintaining a career? Oh, just the, you got to love it. You know, you really got to love it. You got to be made for it, you know, by your creator. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't say, oh, I want to be a rock star and do it for the rest of my life. It's not going to work like that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so what it doesn't do you, work like that. So in, in the in the in that first the first iteration of Chrome where there was that sort of move over to Beggar's Banquet, there was the more synthy stuff, like mm-hmm. I read Exposure and stuff along those lines. It's it's Yeah, like, we were competing with Gary Newman. Yeah, I was gonna, <laughs> <laughs> Well you know, your words, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was that were you just kind of like into the ideas of Oh, like, I love Gary Newman, man. That's great. I probably <laughs> like him more than Damon does, but uh like I love that guy, man. Maybe I love him too much, but I could all, always throw Hendrix in there or yeah. something. It's just to break it up, you know. You know, two polar opposites. I love polar opposites. Well, and it still sounded yeah. uniquely like you guys. It wasn't yeah. like you were. It sounded exactly. You know, no, I wasn't trying to be anybody else. Yeah. I, at least I don't think I was. <laughs> <laughs> So did you have, like, as the technology kind of started to advance? I don't want to say get better. I'm just going to say advance. Like, did you feel like yeah, that was something that changed it, the songwriting? Yeah, I, they, the best guitar effects, I feel, were made back then. Really like the jet phase that we used a lot of. I still, I got one of those. And, uh, yeah, a fan sent me one from England. Oh, nice. Cool. He sent, yeah. Yeah, and actually, I think he sent me two. He said he doesn't use them, and I go, wow, these are impossible to find. So I got one. I could do chrome sounds, you know, that you heard on ha- Alien and Half a Steam Look Moves that <laughs> right, you won't right. hear, you know, that you'll hear it live now. You know, I did manage to scramble up most of the stuff I used back then. Do you with ever, the help of fans and stuff? Do you, you know. do, do you ever mess around with any like newer effects and, and newer? Oh things? yeah, Const- I'm always trying shit, man. I got some new stuff I like, and uh, I've been very disappointed with a lot of new stuff. You know, for me, how I judge an effects pedal is every knob does amazing things. Right. You can't turn it and it does, you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I'm sure you've turned some knobs. What does this do? Yeah. I don't hear any change at all. Oh, it's tone, uh, what is it? No, I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? I want every knob just to do drastic shit. There's the... And that's what I find in... Memory Man by Microsynth. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are great. Yeah. Uh, Every uh, knob just does different. amazing shit. You know, um, Michael Matthews was a genius, man. He made the Microsynth and the Memory Man. I, I called I called him once he was, when he was living in Germany, and he was a really laid back dude. and I kind of had a feeling he got a little ripped off from certain people. Uh, but I told him, man, I, if it wasn't for your effects, I wouldn't be who I am today. And he didn't know who I was. He didn't care. <laughs> but <laughs> I, I told him this few, yeah. you know, anyway. And it was true, you know. Well, like, like the harmonics I, was kind of the pioneer of, like, the, kind of the weirder pedals you know the electric mistress yeah, the memory just, man just, micro synth all that stuff i jesus i get chills just thinking about how great those things are and you know wow and how i wish somebody would keep it up to that standard you know like mike did you know did you have you ever messed around with uh, when you you're talking about like every knob doing different thing the uh, Earthquaker devices data corruptor have you played with that pedal? No, I I still got to exp- I I'm I'm ready to go out and buy some new stuff. 
Man, it is it is. I would. Hey, what, where are you crazy. at? Where do you live? So I lived in Oakland almost my entire life. Uh, oh, first two years, maybe but, you could go to the music store with me and help me find some stuff. Well, I'd love to, huh? but I, li- I live in Milwaukee now. I was just gonna say. So I, oh, I, what the <laughs> fuck you doing there? I ask myself that a lot actually these days. Oh, but, that's okay, man. I understand. I've been in the middle of the country. How about Manhattan, yeah. Kansas? Yeah. Oh, wow. Jesus, Manhattan. <laughs> there. <laughs> the, How about? The lesser-known Manhattan, yeah. Yeah, they call it the Little Apple. (laughs) (laughs) Well, for me, it was just because it was like, oh, it's better for touring, right? Like, it's an easier place to tour out of, and like that's kind of and it's cheaper too. The Bay Area. Oh yeah, yeah. It that's the great part about middle of the country living is everything's cheap. Your house, your rent is cheaper if your band could deal with it, you know. Yeah. But uh, you know. They like to live by the coasts, and uh, so do I, really. And now we could afford it a little better, you know. But then the COVID hit, you know, and I thought we were done. But actually, it's helping us a whole lot. Well, just real quick, I want to mention that Uh, the data corruptor pedal that I was talking about. It's it's, it's kind of like, it's so cool, and it does so many different things, but it's almost like... And what's it called? Let me write this down. Uh... Data corruptor. You get hit by a, a Mack truck right after we talk. <laughs> I won't. What was that thing? It's called a. Oh, it's no. A, so the company is Earthquaker Devices. Earthquaker. Now I heard of that. And then the, the pedal is called a Data Corruptor. God, that sounds great. It, it's, Earth... it's crazy. So it's almost like you need a. Earthquake. What is it? Earth... Earthquaker Devices is the manufacturer. Earthquaker. Like, like Quaker State, right, or like an earthquake. Yeah, I know it's cool though. I like it, Earthquaker. And the name of the uh, pedal what, what, is called Data Corruptor. Earth, Earthquaker Data Corruptor. Yeah, Earthquaker Devices is the name of the company, and then the and Data Corruptor. All right, man. Like, so the Melvins, you've you played shows with the Melvins, right? Their first show was opening up for us. Uh, the the Melvins. Yeah. Really, that's awesome. Did yeah. You, did, did you know? Uh, I mean, it was when the girl was playing bass. Oh, um, Lori. Uh, Lori. Yeah. Black, Lorax. Yeah. Matter of fact, their show was a disaster. Her bass amp crapped out on the first song, <sighs> and uh, she didn't want to do the show and. We go, well, we got an amp, very, we had a Ampeg, very similar to what she was using, big amp. I mean, all intents and purposes, the same amp. Right. But she didn't want to use it, and so they didn't play. Oh, that's <laughs> so they like get through like what, one song, or did they even get Well, it? that's the last time I ever seen her again. <laughs> I think they got somebody else right yeah. away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, Buzz doesn't normally, yeah. um, no, yeah, nobody could put up with that crap. <laughs> and the place was totally packed. Ah, that's you know? terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I know, come on. We were wanting them to play. Oh, we're, pu- we're pushing our amp on. Come on, girl. This one will be better than the one you did, you know, you yeah. broke. You know, just get into the spirit of the thing. Eh. <laughs> did you, uh, so have you, was that the only time you saw the Melvins? I guess you didn't really see the Melvins if they didn't play, but... Or did, have you no, they didn't them? play that time. I did see them, and I really dug it. You know, I dig the Melvins, you know, and I don't really have much opportunity. Because usually when they're touring, we're touring. Yeah, right, That's right. the problem with uh, touring season. But if you're lucky, you happen to be in the same area, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, every once in a while it works out, and you can kind of, like, make some yeah. of things happen. Yeah. I I was yeah. like it's kind of cool when you're on tour and you have you know, a night off and then like you see a friend's band is playing and like, oh yeah and that is the best <laughs> you know I don't want to hear our music anymore I can't <laughs> hear it anymore I'm going crazy <laughs> so do you feel like I mean are there a lot of, are there bands that you feel like that you're into that kind of like our younger bands that yeah i like the god bullies from amrep oh, yeah. i like i really like hepatitis Hepatitis. i is like great. uh i like them guys and uh the halo flies and the cows yep 
you know, love the cows. I just had Shannon on the show not that long ago, actually. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah I great. love Shannon. Guy brightens my life up. <laughs> he's, uh, one of the most unique dudes ever. He's, he's a really Oh, yeah, guy. yeah, the story. The stories. <laughs> yeah, Shannon. <laughs> Never, you know, if you ever want to get out of your funk, just listen to some of the stories this guy went through, man. <laughs> exactly. Like, for example, you know, we're on the road with the cows, right? And they couldn't find Shannon. We're, it was like the next day and we're all supposed to leave. Well, Shannon went walking off with a bottle of something, you know, hard liquor, of course. And he went to an abandoned house <laughs> and he fell through the floor oh my God. And, and down into the basement and broke his leg. And he was sitting down there yelling for help oh until somebody heard of him and called the police. And yeah, we made it. But I think he had a cast on his leg. Or his arm, or something. Wasn't that? Wasn't, yeah, do you remember crazy. when that that little girl fell in the well? Like this was like a lot many years ago. Uh, do you remember this? It was like a big news item. I can't remember. She, uh, baby Jessica. Probably. It was. This was like. Uh, this is like eighty six or something. This is like forever ago. But. Oh, who who was she? Daughter. She like it was. Uh, it was. It was in Texas, and like it was. It was. I don't know why this. I'm thinking of this, but they. Uh, this. This this kid, this like little you know two year old, um, fell into a well in her aunt's backyard, oh, and that's like, really sad. Yeah, and but she was she lived, and then like they, she lived. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they, great. But they sp- had to spend like fifty six hours trying to get her out. Like I don't remember, I don't remember why. Like, I, but they had to like Whoa. dig into it and stuff. It was this whole. Yeah, thing, you man. know. Yeah, I think. I thought it was a little boy. But there was something like that, but maybe it was a girl. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, don't, I do remember it being a real hassle, and it took days, and, oh, man, I, I, it was hard for me, you know, because I was going, oh, man, the kids, oh, man, you know? Yeah, it's tough. Can't, Sometimes you, know, you don't want to hear about it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad that she came out all right. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a bummer sometimes when you hear these stories, and you, you kind of wonder what's going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> God, man. You know, you played, you've played. Uh, you just radical change up here. You've played with a few other people that that I've had on as well. Uh, I had oh, yeah? Ray Washam. Uh, oh, yeah. Ray's my like favorite that. drummer in the whole wide world. What a great freaking guy. What a great guy. And well, what he is drummer. the greatest drummer in the whole wide world. That's what I'm saying. I believe that. Yeah, that's You know, I'm I mean, well, anybody could argue that point. Well... He's up there, man. He's way up there, you know. I, 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 every drummer I ever played with, I just feel incredibly fortunate because every drummer I ever played with, I gotta say, has been top notch. Me, yeah. You know. Well, and how? So, what how's it like when you got someone like that? Like someone so thoughtful and. Uh... You know, oh, in- interesting. Thoughtful. That doesn't sound like Ray. Well, <laughs> thoughtful in his playing. Let's put it that way. <laughs> yeah. He, <laughs> he, <laughs> oh, Gr- Ray's a great person. He's just a wonderful guy, and you know, um, and I hope he's doing well. Uh, yeah. He's done some acting recently. He's actually been huh? he's been doing some acting recently. Like he's Oh really? Yeah, yeah. I want to be an actor. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, I'm even thinking about making my own movie. You wanna make a movie? Yeah, sure, let's do it. <laughs> Fuck man. I don't know how to do it, but I didn't know how to play music either. <laughs> <laughs> we can make we can make a Helios screen movie, it'd be great. Yeah, right. <laughs> Uh, and and I've also yeah. I also have had sure man I I I just know we could do it we could make it happen I man. used to have a public yeah. access show way back in the day I, I <laughs> I'm in a movie called Farm you got to pay to watch it but I hang myself at the end oof yeah it's a really well I know why the the director had me hang myself because he was in love with Monet my girlfriend who at, was a star actress in the picture uh-huh. and so he had me hang myself in the <laughs> what? okay oh i knew it like a i power knew move he did or that like, what was yeah. it? it was like a power move or something like what was the mindset well that was his way of 
telling me and her what he felt about us. You know, I, I want to be your girlfriend. <laughs> Fuck him. I'm going to hang him. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't have to do that. She left me anyway at the end of the movie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Can we? Um, can you? Well, tell- we're still great friends. So. Well, that's good. That's good. Did, can, you know. can you tell me a little bit about uh, dealing um, with uh, Jeff Pincus and Butthole Surfers? I know you did a little guitar on one of their. Records. Oh, Jeff! Yeah, he's greatest bass player, man. He's just way up there with uh, you know um, uh, my friend. Uh, whew, man, my memory sucks today. Smoke too much pot. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, he's way up there, man. He's a pretty interesting. I've had him on the show as well. I thought before I met him, I thought he was going to be a completely different type of dude than than he was. No, like, no. I thought he was Who's that be, again? <laughs> Jeff Pincus. Who? Oh, Pincus. Yeah. Oh God, he is. He's just really sweet. He dude. uh, he's uh just a greatest bass player musician. Really, he is. You know, and I really love the record. Made, made two records. Actually, we made one, but I had we made so much stuff. I had to make another record just to put it on it, you know. Because there were so many so songs. The, yeah, just like a couple songs over, you know. But yeah, so he's on two two Helios Creed records, you know. So yeah, he's and a- someday they might even make money because my solo band is starting to make money. You know, wasn't making any money when we made those records. <laughs> right. Not very much, you right. know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but now, man, fuck. All of a sudden, it's big. My solo band's bigger than Chrome now for some weird reason. You Do know? you think that's just because you're just doing it? Like you're still putting out yeah. records and, and well, uh, I, hitting the road when you can? Yeah, I, my uh, the re-release of Lactating Purple just sold out just like immediately. Yeah, that's the one that and, Tom did, the special edition one, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm, and you know, I, it's not just the music. The cover's outrageous. You know, you have this cartoon drawing of this perfect female body with a face with lips on it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know the alien. The, the the android, the hot android bitch, you know. <laughs> well, well, and that's the um... <laughs> that's Tom's artwork. Yeah, that's, that's Tom Tom's deal. He does the, he does. Yeah, he did a real cuts. good job. Yeah, he's huh? I, so he does all those lino cuts. Uh, yeah, super cool. I've I've had him on a couple times. It's pretty interesting. Oh yeah, his whole operation. Yeah, Tom's great, man. That was a ninety one. You know? Is when you originally did that record? Does that sound right? Is that? Let me think. Ninety one. Uh, which record? Uh, Lactate and purple. Oh gee, uh, yeah, I'd say probably. I was thinking, yeah, ninety one seemed out right, but you know, I could find out exactly um, and get back to you on that's, that. That's <laughs> that's fine. It, it's it's from like that era. Yeah, so it's close enough. It, it's a reissue. I mean, it's sort of like yeah. it's um. It comes from that sort of sci-fi vibe, you know, so the, yeah. the, the android woman is sort of, uh, it fits. <laughs> yeah, it fits, and I don't know, it's, uh, the cover's kind of exciting, you know, and I like the col- the colors, Yeah, and uh, it's been doing really good, I and and the songs are already popular because the record's not new. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, you know? and people love, so that's an interesting thing, too, that, like, with all of this the internet making everything so available, people are kind of going back and discovering all the old stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of good music out there. You know, if you don't like the trend of the new bands, there's no reason you have to stop listening. To That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. There's so much good stuff out there. You know, you get lost in it. <laughs> Can you tell me a little yeah, bit? Yeah, it was, uh, what? Oh, no, go ahead, sorry. Oh, I, I was just going to say, uh, there's so much good stuff out there. You really got to kick ass to just be noticed no matter who you are. Yeah, you that's know? true. It's very true. Yeah. Oh, go go ahead. What were you going to say? Uh, I was going to say, can you tell me a little about uh, the Dark Matter records that you did in the late 90s? Because that was like almost... Oh, yeah, early. yeah. There was a thing that people were getting into around that time, ambient music and... 
I guess I caught, I got in on the tail end of it. Uh, and Brian asked me if I wanted to make one. I, you know, asked me to make one. Thought it would do really. So I made, uh, you know, seeing strange lights. That was my first one, and it was at the tail. I mean, it sold okay, but the whole trend phasing out. And uh, but I still like making them, whether they're popular or not. I I made Dark Matter two, yeah, and I would like to make a Dark Matter three. You know. Well, it seems like it would be pretty low, <laughs> low effort to to do it. Yeah, it's, 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 like yeah. It. That's why I want to keep doing it. It's really cool, relaxed. You know, our music is so jarring. You know, it just makes sense to have something you could really chill with. You know. Well, yeah, and that's kind of why I wanted to, to ask about know? it is because it is like such yeah. a contrast. <laughs> yeah, the, the contrast stuff. is really great. You know, and I want to keep that up. You know. Yeah, there will be a uh, Dark Matter 3, you know, for sure. <laughs> did you, um, how did you, how long were you living in Hawaii? I lived there 12 years altogether. Maybe a little more. Which island was it? But, uh, I lived on Oahu most of the time. I lived on uh, Maui for a a little over a year. I lived on the Big Island for three months. I lived on Kauai for a couple years. Oh, man. I lived almost on all the islands for a while, you know, mostly on Oahu. That's really a great island. It has the best surfing beaches in the world, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. you know, and uh, it's a great island. I mean, if you want to party, you want to surf. You know, it's all there on that island. Maui's just the most beautiful island to me for hiking and stuff. Um, and it's got some good surfing if you're really good at it. You know, I'm not really good at it. <laughs> you can get it dangerous if you're not, yeah. Yeah, it, it could be. But, you know, I just enjoy doing doing it, you know. I've almost died surfing a few times, so yeah, it is dangerous, you know. Um, but I, you know, I gotta do it, man. <laughs> did you find that that the, the, like the Hawaii sort of life did that suit you, or did you did you find? That yeah, I really loved it. You know, I really I felt really healthy, and you know, always had girlfriends, you know, and. I don't know, there's something about the place that worked for me, but I got the cult culturally it was kind of empty at that time when I left. Like it, it, it was really cool when back in the sixties, but then when the seventies and, and eighties came, I mean, not saying it wasn't cool, but San Francisco there, the place to be yeah. for me right, right, right. <laughs> you know? and, and, and like that's it, when chrome happened yeah and it kind of seemed yeah. like with hawaii as, as awesome as it is like it unless you're in a cover band like it's not really super happening musically no there's there's no culture there uh, uh at that time you know culture does come through but it comes and goes because it's such a transient place which is sort of sad but you know, there were a few bands that tried to adopt Hawaii, but, like, you remember that band, I don't know, uh, Quicksilver Messenger Service? Oh, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, they yeah. tried to adopt Hawaii. They were real popular on the North Shore, and they had a couple hits, I guess. And let's see what else band. Uh, what was their, they, yeah, what there was, was their a Mop Tops that were from they had, Hawaii. They had, like, huh? some, they had some hit that was... Um... Kind of like a like a radio hit. I can't remember what it what it is. They had a couple hits. Have another hit. A fresh air. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Which that yeah. was that was a oh, another yeah. hit. Yeah, <laughs> I had that record. <laughs> then there was one. Uh, Happy Trails was at the end. They did a, their version of Happy Trails oh, right. to you. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. <laughs> yeah, because it was all about acid and stuff, you know, yeah. trails. And, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool time to grow up in, I, I got to say. Moody Blues was one of my favorite bands when I was growing up. I, I liked Every every Good Boy Deserves Favor. Oh, yeah. That album, yeah. 
you know, uh, I was just because all the weird changes was very inspiring. They were doing splicing, I could tell. You know, you know, I actually, I I don't think I've ever mentioned this on the show because it never would have probably come up extemporaneously. But I actually have uh, the bass player from the Moody Blues. I have I own one of his yeah. basses. <laughs> <laughs> because he um oh you have his base what one of them yeah he uh oh. cause he, he gave it to his girlfriend at the time who eventually uh-huh. sold it and she wanted to sell it to someone that was going to play it i'm like yeah I'll, I'll you know i need a good and it was a p base wow. like p bass it's that's and she's like oh yeah Ooh, it belongs man. to my ex who's in the moody blues <laughs> Uh, oh when I was God. an alcoholic, oh I pawned mine for a bottle of booze. <laughs> oh, man. That's <laughs> I go, it's time to quit drinking when I start doing shit like that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I've i been sober now for what, seven years. Well, congratulations, man. That's awesome. That's great. Yeah, I know. Is it a... Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm fine, man. I'm happy. That's good. It's a it's a yeah. it's, it's a hard time to be sober with uh, this lockdown and everything going on, man. Yeah, I would. The last thing I would want to do is drink. It'd probably make me fucking, you know, <laughs> weird. Do you find yourself? Where the fuck's going on with all this lockdown bullshit? Throw away those masks. <laughs> you know, right, I don't right, know. Right, right, right. get all Absolutely. weird on everybody. And I'm already weird enough. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> do you find I've been I've been asking folks, you know, do you find that you've uh, been able to be creative? Like, have you been able? To yeah, be more creative than ever. It never stops. I think that <laughs> the COVID's helping me, man. I'm getting inspiration. I got it's making my records sell. It's just incredible. I've I've never got such a big royalty check, you know, like I did a week ago. That's awesome. In my life. That's really cool. You know, I was like shocked. I go, I was opening up this letter, you know, I go, that's probably going to be a few hundred bucks, you know, yeah. maybe 500 at the most. You know, the usual, oh no, I don't want to tell you how much it was, but you know. It was a respectable It was amount. way more than that. Right. <laughs> many, many, many yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, what? And it was a record that I didn't expect it to sell that well. You know, like, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> I never got a royalty check from this company before. Yeah. Now I got the biggest one I ever got. Well, and it's, <laughs> and you've got a pretty story discography. I mean, not even just with Chrome, but I mean, you have something like 20 solo records too, right? So it must be kind of hard to like. Yeah, I got a lot of, those. the solo records are really getting popular. And Chrome is too. Yeah. Well, I think yeah. Alien Soundtracks and Half Machine, those are both records that it seems like some people yeah, discovers they, them Yeah, they every won't year. ever die. Yeah, and that's that's you amazing. Know, yeah, that's, some... a, that's a bit yeah. of history. You know, you get to be a part of like an overall, you know. Something, aspect. huh? Yeah, yeah the, the, yeah. the 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 collective subconsciousness of music or whatnot. Hey, I know that guy. It's <laughs> <laughs> cool, yeah. Um <clears throat> So what do you got? Uh, so I know you're. Do you want to speak a little bit about the model railroad stuff? I know you're a pretty avid. Oh yeah, I don't talk about that any time. There's nobody. I'm the only one here that I know that is fanatic about it. <laughs> not saying they're not here. It's just uh, I'd have to go to Whistle Stop, right. my uh, train store, and there's a bunch of old farts like me that love model trains. How did you but, uh, uh, how'd you get into that? Was that something that you always been into or was that a recent Yeah, thing? ever since I could remember, ever since I was three I loved trains. Yeah. And my psychic said that I had two train engineer lives. That's why I like trains. Oh maybe so that's much. why then, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. And my brother too. We're train family, I guess. So she said I feel kinda like kinda like weird because I'm not running trains. I'm playing guitar right. in this life. She goes, it's a little bit weird for you. I go, it is. I feel like I should be running a train, man. <laughs> That's wild. And I, I, I got, uh, I had to go to anger management because of drinking. And I was in anger management with this train engineer and I'm a rock star, you know, 
And he goes, what do you do? I go, I play music and, and I got drinking because of, you know, free drinks at the shows and I'm a real dick when I drink. So, and I got in trouble and now I have to quit. So, and, and I go, what happened to you? He goes, I'm a train engineer. I go, no, really? Cause I never met, uh, you know, like here I got a friend that's a friend before I even knew he was a train engineer. Right, right. How funny. And I go, man, don't you love that job? He goes, I hate it. I go, what? I'm all disappointed. This guy hates his job. I go, well, why are you doing it then? The money's great. <laughs> I go, well, what's wrong with it then? He goes, uh, I'm never with. I never get to see my wife. She's going to leave me. And I'm just mad all the time. I can't ever find a girlfriend because of the hours. And I go, really? Oh, I never never thought about anything like that. I guess the hours would be kind of screwy, you know? Well, and you don't love trains, you know? And I go, wow, you know? And he, and he goes, what do you do? I go, I play rock music, blah, blah, blah. And he, and he goes, wow, fascinating. You know, there's nobody who plays rock in Manhattan, Kansas, you know? Yeah. So I was a real rarity, you know? And uh, so we were talking like, man, if I could, I would trade places with you. You know, I'd take it. You could be a rock star and I could be a train engineer. Wow, for a year or something like that, you know? Like the Prince and the Popper, or a, a yeah, you could do it? my job and I could do your job. Boy, that would be great. Or Freaky Friday was that the movie? And if <laughs> I didn't move from there, I'd probably wind up being his friend and trying to squeeze on his train engine rides and shit. But you know, I moved back here. I had a few cool things there, man. I was a part of a really cool train club. You know, they really liked me too. You know, because they were kind of like redneck train lovers right. there kind of redneck hippies i don't know if you know the type yeah i do but uh yeah. yeah and when i showed up but they didn't have long hair but you could tell they were kind of red hippies because they like trains trains kind of a mellow thing to like you know and anyway when i got there they were calling me uh, hippie because uh, i had long hair at the time you know but after a few months i was like their favorite person you know Right, if they got to know you and know no yeah, kind of your jib. Yeah. What a train freak I was and you know they didn't know any I never told them I was in music. They never knew about that part of me. How funny. Like I think this is all they need to know. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I don't wanna fucking freak them out. Like well, I fuck I, I freak out my own family. Once they hear my music they never talk to me again and shit, <laughs> you know. You know, like, oh, man. I go, well, I haven't heard from you, man. What happened to you? Oh, man, I played your record. I had a weird trip. I go, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't do drugs. He goes, I still had one. <laughs> well, then it's, sometimes it's like people feel like they need to have an opinion on it, too. And it's like, no, it's okay. Yeah, you don't need strong to opinions. Right. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> don't mind. Don't mind. <laughs> My mom would look at me sideways, you know, like, oh. <laughs> That's funny. But she was very proud that I was able to put records together every year. You know, like, wow, how do you do that? Right. I don't know, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really don't. Can you, well, that, and that reminds me of um, <clears throat> uh, the Skinyard dudes. You, uh, oh, yeah, um, Daniel House and... Yeah. Uh, and, uh, fuck, uh, uh, Jason, fuck. Jason, Jason Finn. Yeah. 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 I heard that those guys are a little disappointed that I didn't talk about them very much about last laugh, but, and they, never, you know, but, and they never got any money. I never got any money from that record either, <laughs> but they don't know that. But I did get money from lactating purple. Right. Yeah. That I know. Well, that's a, I don't know what's, but if it ever does make money, I'll know it, and I will give them some money. Did, did you did you just know those dudes from? That's when you lived in Seattle. Well, or I was, you know uh, let's see, I uh, I was going to get a sub pop record deal, but I didn't like those guys, and I don't think they liked me. So I, I liked it. I liked Tom Hazelmeyer from Amrep, so I went with him, and. Uh, to see, uh, and I didn't have 
a band at the time. I had a record deal, but with no band. And, and I asked, I went to a sub pop and said, does anybody want to play with me to make this record? You think? And, and Daniel and, you know, and, uh, you know, and Jason, Jason showed up and, uh, God, they're great. You know, yeah, yeah, great players, man. Just fucking great, man. Just greatness. <laughs> just solid greatness and they should be recognized and they should make tons of money. And well, I know Jason had a break with the, the presidents and, uh, yeah, they were the they, United States. And that was, um, that was a pretty popular band for a while. I mean, fucking I, I, wasn't it though, man, it was, it was on everywhere. MTV <laughs> all the time. Yeah. You know, and I was really happy for him cause I knew, I think I heard he bought a house and stuff. Oh, good for him. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, that's what all musicians just want to get is their house. Have their somewhere. own place. <laughs> have to yeah, their play, their own place. They yeah. get to that level, man. They're fucking, they accomplished something, you know, you know, home. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, it's nice to have a home. Having to pay rent for a bunch of people that think you're crazy. What do you do for a living? Uh, I do this. <laughs> What is that? That's not music. <laughs> I'm a model train aficionado. I get paid for my appearance. Yeah, they like the, mo- the train. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's easy to understand. But, you know, huh? <laughs> I said that's at least easy to understand rather than... Yeah, it is. Yeah, and I... Yeah, it's so opposite, you know? It's like, here's this thing, you know? And it's not like... To me, they're related. Right. Like, when I play the guitar on stage, I feel like I'm a train engineer. And when I'm in a train, I hear guitar playing, <laughs> and there's always a good beat. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, you know? kind of, and I guess if you think about like some of your records, like it has that kind of like insistent yeah. train sort of energy, well, right? So rock and rock supposedly came from the train. You know, the that's how rock came around. You know, black eyes playing blues to the train, right? And uh, I mean, that's how I think it started, you know, and I don't know. Just that rhythm. Yeah. yeah. You know, that the rhythm of the train and the blues and, you know, the, I don't know, the talent back then, you know. So do you have any, like, plans for recording any new music or anything along those lines or well just i got a new coming? record coming out a new chrome record well, that's exciting it's going to be called uh as far as i know since i'm the one who titled it's going to be called scarapy you know that's that's some news that's some breaking news <laughs> yeah it's breaking and we finished it like a week ago and sent it off so there's breaking news so i figure it'll be out you know, around spring to, you know. That's usually how it goes, yeah. And especially yeah. COVID's like you know, I don't really know exactly when, but that's what I would think, yeah. you know. So we got that. And uh, I do have, um, you know, we have that other, uh, I don't know if you know about uh, Galactic Octopi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, the one that came yeah, out. Yeah, it's, uh, it's never really been on a, record i don't think and uh somebody wants to you know buy it and release it on a record so i I think i'm gonna have that coming out on a record too i got uh tidal forces coming out on an album i have um lactating purple coming out it's already out and i'm gonna have uh galactic coming out you know on an album, yeah, I'm really kicking ass. You That's know? awesome. Yeah, you got all kinds of stuff happening. That's great. <laughs> yeah, just all of a sudden, man. One day I was suicidal, and next day I get a huge check and all kinds of people calling me. You know, <laughs> it was that quick. I swear to God. Right. You know, not that I forget about the suicidal stuff. It's just a way of. It was really dark days. No, I understand, know? and that that's not uncommon. Yeah, yeah, that's just the word I use. <laughs> but yeah, the next day, uh, and it's been getting better ever since. 
for me anyway, it doesn't look like it's getting better for anybody else around me. <laughs> Everyone else is screwed. <laughs> yeah, the world's screwed. <laughs> they want it. They want my music to hear how screwed it's getting. <laughs> hey, he knows how screwed up everything is. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know how screwed up everything is. Wow, great job. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that there's anything, has there been anything recently that's sort of changed how you think about playing guitar or sort of uh, giving you any insights into doing different stuff or anything along those lines? Yeah, I see my guitar as a big, scary monster these days. Like, I'm trying to figure out how to make it groan and moan and <laughs> scream and scare the shit out of people. That's what scare is like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a... Like, quit fucking around, man. <laughs> I'm going to throw my guitar at you. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, there's a lot of anger on this record, and deservedly so, you know. Um, I mean, we're expressing the way we feel, and it seems like everybody is. Yeah. Punk band or hippie band or whatever, everybody's angry about what's going on. So, you know, it's an interesting time. It is, and it's, you know, it, it, it's almost like that uh, that proverb, you know, the proverb that's a curse, may you live in interesting times. It's <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, we could be living in safe, boring times. I, I choose right. interesting, scary times. You know, I mean, what would, kind of movie would you rather watch? A scary movie or uh, a movie about, you know, uh, the hills are alive with the sound of music or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's not a bad movie, though. <laughs> I like that movie, but I could think of something else, you know, like, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Would you rather see Black Sabbath or James Taylor? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, good point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got to remember that one. Would you rather see Black Sabbath or James Taylor? I like them both. You know, that's what I would say. I like all music. There's a time and a place for both, for sure. Yeah, there's a time and place for everything. Yeah. But I think I like Black Sabbath a little bit better than <laughs> <laughs> than uh, than James Taylor. Well, they definitely yeah. <laughs> they're, it's definitely a different mood to to put Yeah, <laughs> polar opposites once again. <laughs> That's what I like about music. Yeah, you never know. There's all kind You know, if I was seriously filthy rich, I probably just my hobby would probably be just go around the world and listen to music that nobody discovered yet, you know, like find a instrument or a tribe and oh, this shit, nobody even knows about it, you know. There must be a ton of shit out there that, you, you know. You know, the thing that I've noticed is they have these shows now where it's basically like someone from a band going around and doing stuff like that or like talking yeah. to people. Like they have a... Yeah, it seems to me I've seen stuff like that. Yeah, they have a show that's Brian Johnson from ACDC just kind of like driving around in his classic cars, like talking to like Dolly Parton and like Robert Plant Oh, and yeah, stuff, yeah, you know that's I mean? pretty cool. I did see that. Yeah, and uh, uh, having uh, rock stars, successful rock stars hanging around with criminals and yeah, just chatting you with know. each other and hanging out. Yeah, I, I get, yeah. why not, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, uh, rock stars are just one failure away from being a criminal. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, you <it> relate. <laughs> uh, so the... Um, so, oh, there's, there's a couple things. So uh, we, you know, we talked a, briefly about Damon's... Yeah. journeys and, and tribulations did, did, did you I mean you guys were like out of touch for like a long time I know you, that you did kind of get back in well, touch again, right? it's, it was amazing because Damon was such an anti-drug person mm -hmm. when we but he when it came to women and if a woman said do this drug he would do it if he liked her enough and that's okay. where it's you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like, he had a weakness, you know. He could say no to me, 
but he wouldn't say no to a girl. <laughs> right, 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 right. Yeah, you know, I go, Damon, you better start saying no to these bitches. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to kill you. <laughs> so is that how he ended up getting getting involved with that as a woman? Well, yeah. I mean, that's how guys sort of do it, I think. Uh, you know, I get high with a girl. That's how I discovered certain drugs, you know, girlfriends. Oh, by the way, I'm into this. What is that? Oh, why don't you try it? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, come on. It's not going to hurt you. It's really good for sex. Okay, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the magic words. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'll try it. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> I'm in. <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did you, yeah. did you, uh, you know, did you really talk to him that much like near the end though i mean was it ever kind of like any sort of uh you know did that re- friendship last did that musical relationship ever have any what hopes with of girls being oh, well no <laughs> with damon <laughs> with who with damon <laughs> wait a minute i had to beep what what no with with, with damon not with that well I mean, I guess oh <laughs> yeah we tried to get back together and when he was in really bad shape and I was worried about him. I could tell he wasn't doing good. And he goes, let's make another record. Oh, well, I, let's make a Chrome record together. And I go, I'm all into that. Where do you want to do it? Oh, I just thought we'd do it through the mail. I go, no, no, no. We got to work together like the old days. And then he told me how he didn't want me to see him because he was overweight. And I go, I don't I'm not going to bed with you. I'm going to make a record with you, you know? Right, right, right. Exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't care. It, it just turns out he was like over 300 pounds. But so what, you know? Yeah. You know? I mean, that's silly. And anyway, I really was bummed out that I didn't get that. I wanted to help him. I go, it's going to help my brother. The girls aren't going to help him. I'm going to help him, man. I'm going to get him off this shit. Yeah. Uh, even if I have to live with them, I'm going to get them off this shit and get them back to square one or whatever. But I never had the chance because, uh, you know, or yeah, we were talking on the phone and then I got a message that he, he OD'd, Ugh, you know, that's such a bummer. Yeah. I mean, I guess it was uh, a long time ago at this point, but it's still, I mean, it doesn't stop being a 95 or something. Yeah. Uh, see, that's 25 years. Well, I guess you got to see, like, a, and the reason why I bring that up is because it's like, you know. I am like, I think it's, what would he be doing if he was alive anyway? What, is he going to kick drugs and make the greatest music in the world again? I doubt it, you know. Yeah. He's better. What happened, man? He died a legend, a living legend, not a loser, you know. You well, know what I mean? Yeah, and then people can remember the the good time. Mean, That's the way he wanted to go. Yeah. He wanted to end up like Michael Jackson did. Yeah. You know, I go, what, dead? Dead and famous? He goes, yeah, that's the coolest. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Yeah, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool to stick around, too, you know, and be famous. <laughs> exactly. and You know, what's wrong with that? Yeah, it's yeah. not that cool? I guess not. <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> Well, I did it, so I guess I'm not that cool. <laughs> Look, I, I, you know, I should be dead, but I'm sorry, I'm not. In, in, inconveniently <laughs> alive. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a feeling I'm needed here. You know. Well, it sounds like you got. I mean, there's a there's new records coming. It sounds like you got like a lot happening for. A... Yeah, yeah, it's a good musical time right now, and I, it's just going to get better. You know, we're we're not going to this whole covid lockdown bullshit. It, it isn't going to fly much longer. Um, I they have five different versions of covid. You know what I mean? Now yeah, mutates as a virus. So. Yeah, they have all the mutations, you know, and when. <laughs> well, I do hope that we'll get some manner of uh 
vaccine oh, yeah. for it. You know, don't I think worry. it's just a matter yeah, of time. Yeah, I don't know. I'm I don't know. I'm not worried about the that that COVID shit. You know. I don't worry about things like that. I already survived hepatitis C, which was supposedly not survivable and especially as long as I had it. And you know, you can't kill a loss. Yeah. That's just all there is to it. <laughs> Well, that's I a, didn't know it at a time, you know. Yeah. You know, I should be dead. But, yeah, maybe after the next album, I'll let him die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I certainly hope not. No, no, I, I like it here. I really do like it here. You know, I don't know anybody on the other side. I don't know what I'd be doing over there. I, you know, I died once. I really remember everything about it. I was about three, four years old and I left my body because wow. I died and I was floating around the hospital and it was way more real than a dream. It was more real than life itself. And I was floating and I was floating down the hallway and it was really empty, you know, and I was floating for quite a while. And then there was this nurse running the other way, you know, just really frantically running with a worried look on her face. So I go, wow, that's interesting. Fox nurse. And wouldn't you know it, she ran right to my crib and gave me CPR, and I sucked back into my body. My mother was there crying because I was already dead. I sucked back into my body, and I've been alive ever since. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that happened a few times with me. I would always catch pneumonia and almost kick off, you know. God, that's that's horrifying. I mean, that's it's. I don't remember, but it's yeah, yeah. That's that's. I remember that's hospitals. I remember being in hospitals a lot, you know, and I'm in being really lonely for my mom. And I wanted my mommy to take me home. Yeah, I, yeah, I didn't know what was going on. Whew. Well, but here I am. There you are, and you got a new record yeah. coming up pretty soon. And that's yeah, I, I, I'm perfectly don't have any health problems like that. And we're happy for that, to be sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of people have that story where they're really got these really heavy. You know, like they catch pneumonia all the time, or they catch these bad flus as a kid. But then, as soon as they get Old and uh, an adult, they don't have any problems, you know. Yeah. I was one of those kind of kids. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those things where you, know, you, you got to wonder just if it's building up a resistance or if it's, uh, <laughs> you know, like what's what, what the deal is. Yeah. And they also experimented with me. My mother allowed them to do experiments with me, which kind of... They, they at early stages, they said they could straighten my eyes. If they would have left my eyes alone, they would have been totally fine. So they tried to straighten my cross eyes, uh -huh. but my eyes went back to where they should be, and then my eyes were wall-eyed. Oh, man. Did they? And they did. So then I got that fixed, and it was free because um, it was a cosmetic operation, Right. And those operations are free for uh, a person with my kind of insurance, you know. Well, that's that's nice. So thing. here I am. Yeah, I was gonna say here you are. <laughs> you got it. Got it sorted. Fixed that's face, something. fixed teeth. <laughs> Even my hair is fake. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's actually real. Um, since I quit drinking, it started growing back heavier than ever. Yeah, that happened. I was losing it, you know, yeah, my hair. And I didn't know it was all about all because I was drinking when I quit drinking. I noticed my hair was starting to thicker and thicker and thicker. Oh, I, speaking of hair, I have a funny story about my dad. He uh, he was completely bald, you know, except for a little bit the sides thing, you know. Right. And, well, he, uh, the monk, his heart failed. <laughs> huh? The monk, when it's like the, the sides only. Yeah, it was the monk thing, right? Yeah. And, well, he had, he was one of the first heart transplant patients. 
in the world like maybe one or two, the second guy or the first guy. I think he was the first as far as I remember. And they gave him the heart of an 18 year old kid that died in a car accident. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, 18 year old kid. And my dad grew the thickest hair of head he ever had. Man, this this after getting the uh, heart transplant. Yeah, after getting the eighteen year old's heart. Wow, interesting. In my yeah, my my step my step brother said, Dad's heart was thicker than mine. <laughs> <laughs> I go, wow, I didn't know anything about that. That's you mean people that you know, a young heart, they get all those young attributes back, you know, or whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe you could just make your heart a good thing, and maybe you'll grow your own hair. <laughs> well, yeah. Maybe. But I thought that was a wicked ass story. You yeah, know? That's, a, that's a great story. Yeah. <laughs> oh, obviously the cure for baldness is somewhere within the heart. I've never heard that. I've never heard anybody talk about that. No, never. You never. know. <laughs> but. You know, I got it straight from the horse's mouth. My brother. <laughs> yeah, that's wow. That's that's considering how many, you know, hair restoral uh, schemes and products. Well, my dad they would have. have never done any of that <laughs> shit. I was gonna say they maybe they maybe they yeah they they missed the uh, opportunity to. <laughs> no, I I wouldn't. Do, I don't think I would do any of that hair restoration shit either. You know, it's, it, you know, I know people that's done that, and somehow it looks fake to me. I don't know, like it just, yeah. you know, I don't want to say any names because I, <laughs> you know, some of these people. It's okay. We, know, we don't need to name names. <laughs> no, I don't want to. You know, I don't care talking about my hair issues, but I'm not going to talk about other people's hair issues. Yeah, it's okay. We can we know? can we can leave people to wonder yeah. on that one. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But yeah, I have, I've had rock star friends walk around with hair plugs and, you know, you name it, man, toupees and, yeah. you know, you didn't even know it, you know. <laughs> this has, this has nothing to do with toupees or hair, but it's something that occurred to me while we're, while we're still talking. You know, you mentioned Hawkwind earlier. Uh, didn't Nick Turner play sax on, uh, one, yeah. one of the records, right? How cool is yeah. that? Freaking Nick Turner. Nick Turner played sax. We well, got they got another guy. Well, because that's I uh, didn't hear it. Yeah, huh? yeah, no, no, no. I was just, I was just saying because Hawkwind is you know when you think of like psychedelic bands, right? It's sort of like almost like the gold standard. Oh yeah, yeah, Hawkwind, absolutely, man. You know, it kind of with a punk feel to it. Well, totally. You know, absolutely. Ever since the beginning, you know. It's almost as if they came up with that beat and, and the punks took it, you know. So that made them sort of cool. You know, like, they're not pure hippies. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, Lemmy, yeah. Lemmy played in that band oh, man, for a bit, hey, so, you know. <laughs> the last record sounds a little bit like punk rock almost, man. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Dave Brock. Huh? I said absolutely. It's a uh, you know yeah, if, if, yeah. You're, if you're listening uh, with an uh, with a open mind and uh, open ears, you know. Yeah, that's the only way I hear music, man. I music to me is the universal language, man. <laughs> I think you're on to something like that, and so it's kind of interesting that, and I'm thinking about it's um, yeah, I think it's like a live version uh, of hyperventilation. Cool. That, uh, that, that, that oh that yeah, I, I remember that one with the with the saxophone and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's it was, was that something where like we didn't plan it. No, it just we were just all going out on the road together. <laughs> yeah, me yeah. And Nick and you know, it was a circus. It was a circus too. I'm telling you, man. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, talk about Spinal Tap. You know they base Spinal Tap on uh, Hawkwind and Motorhead. I believe and it. Yep. I went out on the road with three Spinal Tap, man. And I'm telling you, they make Spinal Tap look like a, a conservative group of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? These the real McCoys here, man. Yeah, it's even crazier. Uh, it's just... 
you and you just, <laughs> just for example, the sound lady goes, the sound lady's driving the tour manager. She's a driver too. And, um, Nick asked for Dale. I just bought Nick this pound of pot. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, and Nick asked Dale to pass the pound to him so he could, you know, and Dale dropped the pound out the window going, you know, 60, 70 miles an hour, right? Right. And I'm freaking out because this is like hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of dollars. Yeah, it's not I don't pull over. You know, Ina, you got to pull over. The pot fell out the window. She goes, no, we're late for the show. I don't give a fuck about the show. I want that pot. You know, and it, big old huge argument starts, you know. That's what it was like. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And that was one of the understandable things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, it just right, never right. ended. But oh, let me think of another thing. Oh, yeah. Um, we're all staying in this joint apartment, right, where everybody has their own room and there's a TV set living room place, you know, the whole band. And uh, all of a sudden, you hear, wakey, wakey, and fucking Del Dentmore has the TV turned all the way up on a channel that's going, shh, <laughs> and wakey, wakey, and my girl, my wife, no, Z at the time woke up, and I'm going to kill you. She's going after him with, uh, you know, strangle-like hands, and, uh, and this is going on, and... Uh, Next thing you know, the whole band is fighting amongst each other. And so I sneak out the door. I go down to the coffee shop, you know, and I sat down. I sat down on a chair that was filled with a plate of mustard, <laughs> mustard dip and shit. And so I had mustard all over my ass. You know, this is how I woke up one morning. Before coffee. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite the wake up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's just, that, and that was pretty common. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, it made Spinal Tap look like a conservative outfit. <laughs> you know? that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And that was one of the good days. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. You know, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the residence and snake finger and the whole Ralph record. Mm-hmm. And, that. and I realized, uh, I, I was going to start trying to wrap things up, but I mean, you were, you were pretty close to snake finger at, at one point. Way back oh, then, I love right? snake. We were going to be best friends and he died. He liked me and I liked him. That's another uh, dude with a very unique style. Like just very, yeah, very I love, cool. he was a great guy too. A great guy just the most wonderful personality loving person unlike you know i i didn't really care for the other guys in the uh in the residence you know the the guys that he worked with but i really loved him i liked h too they had this h guy that played keyboards uh, well, anyway yeah. i love the residents I'll end it by saying I love the residents. Okay? There you go. There you go. There's, there's... Yeah. <laughs> In case he's listening or he's <laughs> going to catch wind or something. But it's true. I do love the residents and their big influence on me and and all that good stuff. You know? Yeah, that's a, that's another that's another act that just never never has stopped. You know, continue, yeah. Continue you doing know. stuff. Well, King's a really nice guy. King from the Melvins. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, Buzz, yeah. Buzz is great. Buzz is awesome. In, in, uh, I just find him a very strange man, but hey, you know, that's what makes rock guitar special, right? Well, he's 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 he has more of his own kind of unique world he's built around himself than almost anyone I've ever met. But yeah, he's, he's definitely. Like, I tried to become friends with him, and he wouldn't let me in. <laughs> He's, he's, hey, you remember me, Helios, the guy that helped you open up and yeah. like you? And hey. 
he's he's, he's got know. a tireless work ethic, but it's funny because he can turn it on and off like a dime as far as... Uh, yeah, i seen him do that. Yeah. Hey, well, that's fine, you know, like, just keep playing, you know. You're not in this world to live up to my expectations. <laughs> you got to right. do what you do, man. <laughs> you know? Hey, man, it's great talking to you, man. I, I think this is great. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been so great talking to you. Thank, thanks so much for the time. I'm so glad we got to do it. Uh, the last thing, it's the only can question I ever ask people. And yeah. It's just, and it's just, uh, why do you do what you do? Because I love it. And I, oh, well, the first reason is my friend made a band and he had a girlfriend and I couldn't get a girlfriend. So I figured if I made a band, maybe I could get a girlfriend and it worked. (laughs) So yeah, that's the main, that's the first and foremost reason. And I just started liking music, you know, and didn't matter, you know, uh, didn't need anybody to be happy with music. (laughs) I I discovered music is the shit. (laughs) Yeah. And uh, we we thank you for that and for all the great music, man. It's been a, it's been great talking to you. Thanks so much, dude. All right, man. Thank you, brother. And call any time. Sounds good, brother. Take it easy. All right. All right. Bye. There he goes. Helios Creed. Wow. Uh, let's uh, let's listen to some TV as eyes, man. Cool. That was awesome. <laughs> Thank you. 
Octavian Purple by Helios Creed. Before that, TV has eyes by the incredible and timeless badassery. Thank you. Yes, yes, that was a great back announce. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, nobody ever appreciates the back announce, do they? People, people really should appreciate a good back announce. Otherwise, how you know what you were listening to? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So before that, we had TV has eyes. By Chrome. That's off of there. There's an Alien Soundtracks, Half Machine Lip Moves, Double Record. Really can't can't recommend that enough. If you, if you are just entering the world of Helios Creed and Chrome and all that, that's the place to start, for sure. Well, there you go. That's another Protonic Reversal, episode 213 with Helios Creed. Thanks for listening, everybody. The show airs Thursdays, usually. <laughs> 8 Eastern, 7 Central, 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific, on Radio Nope, RadioNope.com. Say yes to Nope. Podcasted throughout the world, wherever you get your podcasts. ProtonicReversal.com for the archives. There's a lot of them. If you like the show and you want to get episodes sooner, you can support the show and accomplish that goal by giving to Patreon. Patreon.com slash Protonic Reversal. Dollar a month, uh, you get earlier access. That's it. Otherwise, no ads, no sponsors. No kidding. Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Anyone within the sound of my voice. So... Yeah, I just want to say thanks to everyone. This has been, uh, uh, it's been great doing these stay-at-home pandemic episodes and, oh, it's doing the show. I'm feeling very thankful. 50,000 watts of Thank you. Thank you for listening, listener. Appreciate you. I want to ionize the air. Oh, yeah, as I mentioned, you know, like and subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, it helps people find it, you know, if you're into it. iTunes reviews, all that malarkey. This microphone Malarkey. turns sound into electricity. Stay safe out there, everyone. Can you hear me now? Out on Route 128. Take it easy. And lonely. Take it easy. Radio on. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? to my top 10. I'd like to thank our sponsor. But we haven't got a sponsor. Not if you were the last man on earth. She was prepared to prove it. This one goes out to a special girl. There is no special girl! It's the, it's the end of radio. The last announcer plays the last record.
record. The last watt leaves the transmitter. Circles the globe in search of a listener. Can you hear me now? Broadcasting if there's no one there to receive. It's the end of radio. As we come to the close of our broadcast day.